Hello, welcome to the latest video. This is my festival survival guide. Now to start with, I'll just say, I know I look very young, but I'm actually 68. Not even 69, isn't that sad? And I've been to a few festivals in my time, I would say thousands, and I've also organized a few. Here's my very short, I hope, tips on how to get the most out of festival. And of course, it doesn't matter whether it's a music festival, or this is what it's really for, but it could be a film festival, or, or anything that involves going away from home. Right, the first thing you gotta do is make sure that you're organized. Make sure you've got a list of what you're going to take. Write it down, whether it's in your phone, or whether it's on a piece of paper if you're old school. So before you go, just tick off, or mentally even, if you're that kind of person, everything you're going to need to take with you because there's nothing worse than turning up at the festival and finding you don't have your tickets or your hotel room key. I shall talk about hotels later. That was a joke, but I'll talk about hotels. First thing to worry about is money. A lot of festivals these days are cashless, which is fair dues, but you've still got to get to the festival, haven't you? Although often in rural places where they have a village shop you might want to go into. Look here, we're very proud of our town. This is a decent town and a local shop. We'll have no trouble here. Or a garage, and they might not take cards, or they might have no internet access when you're there. So I always take some cash with me. And that's another thing, don't take all your cards in, just take one card, maybe two if you're a bit paranoid, and some cash. And keep all those in a separate pocket. If one of them goes, it's like, oh, inconvenient, but if you lose everything, it's a nightmare. <laughs> Tell me what you think about your festival experience in the comments. Have you recently had a festival experience? Do you have a, another tip you can pass on? Please comment below. And while you're at it, if you like the video, please subscribe, like it, etc. And watch all the way through, because if you don't, YouTube are going to think I'm some sort of terrible video maker, which, as my friend, we all know that I am, but we don't want them to know, do we? So keep it quiet, eh? Now you have an idea before you go what the weather's going to be like. If it's going to rain, take stuff for rain. If it's going to be hot and sunny, make sure you've got your sunscreen and all that sort of stuff because you do not want to be the person who in five or ten years hence dies of skin cancer. Believe me, very painful. Take a hat or whatever to shield the sun from you. Maybe a couple of t-shirts and long sleeve things. It gets cold at night, etc, etc, etc. So you know what you're gonna take roughly. And after a while, you work it out. You tend to take the same sort of stuff. Hang on, one of them got. Shoes, if it's just for two or three days, one pair of shoes, but if it's like for a week or more, you can need more than one pair because it will get sticky. So I take a spare pair of shoes, things like that. Make sure that what you're taking is going to be good for the ground that you're going to be at. It's hot, it's going to be hard. Like you don't take your best shoes to a festival, put that way. And you might want to take a pair of Wellingtons or gum boots, whatever you call them. If it's going to be wet, but if it's not going to be wet, you won't. So just use your common sense. But don't take too much stuff. Just take the barest minimum of what you're going to need. Food. Some people take food to a festival, other people don't. If you're camping, you might want to take um, stuff with you. But bear in mind, it's going to be hot. Unless you're taking a fridge, the food might might go off and even though the food stalls are expensive believe me you're probably 99.9999% certain not to get food poisoning from them because they have hygiene training they have certificates and if they do poison people they'll probably lose their livelihood so they do try hard not to poison people whereas you are not food trained and you could easily leave your Say you're taking bacon, I'm a vegetarian, so I wouldn't take bacon, or I might take corn bacon or something, but if you're not a vegetarian, you might take your bacon, and it might be out in the heat and get all nasty and horrible, or you might have a mouse or rat eating it when you're not there, and that transmits a horrible disease. You don't want to risk all that, so you're spending probably hundreds of pounds buying tickets. I know money's tight, but don't want to cut corners that are going to put you in hospital. So, what's oh, a nice sound. Can okay, you hear that sound? They're actually outside my thing now. They started to actually strim now, which is really 
good, but uh, never mind. I hope you enjoy these streaming sounds. I did mention hotels earlier, did I not? Now I tend to stay in hotels. Last time I camped was at Glastonbury about 10 or 15 years ago. Yeah, I was there for like a week nearly, and I slept about four hours the whole time I was there, so it meant I was cranky, I didn't enjoy myself as much, so I decided then that I would always stay in a hotel. And frankly, you can get a hotel usually near a festival for a reasonable amount of money. Bear in mind that hotel room prices tend to rise when there's high demand. So you definitely don't want to book a hotel that's right next to a festival or the nearest hotel to a festival. I tend to go to the next town or whatever. It may cost a bit extra to get there. Like if you're not driving, you might have to get a bus or even a taxi. But believe me, what you're going to say from the hotel room is going to pay for your transport several times over and the further away from the festival you are the cheaper the hotel is probably going to be so you really want to um, balance that up again common sense if you're staying in a hotel the chances are there'll probably be someone else there who's going to the festival too who might have a car or if not you could probably share a taxi make friends with them that brings up my last point is don't be the arsehole at the festival. If you go to a festival this week, the chances are there'll be 10, 100 people, maybe thousands of people going to the next festival you go to. And if you get a reputation for being the arsehole, for being the person who blows the whistle at every bit of music that's going. <laughs> seat right in the front of the stage and spreads out or waves a flag or whatever. If you're the arsehole then over time you're going to find yourself a very lonely festival goer. Whereas if you tend to be a bit nicer you'll find that you may lots of friends at these festivals so believe me it's always better to be the nice guy than be the arsehole. Your festival visits will be a lot happier than they would have been otherwise. So that's basically all I've got to say. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.